13 Houston, uh, we'd like to disable quad C and D. Use Alpha and Bravo, over. Okay, 13, we got uh, Fredo on TV. Uh, Roger, Houston. What we plan to do for you today is start out in the uh, spaceship or uh, Odyssey and take you on through from Odyssey uh, into the tunnel into Aquarius and show you a little bit of uh, the landing uh, vehicle. And uh, your TV operator is now resting on the center couch. Looking at uh, Fred Hayes, whose head is now just about at the beginning of the tunnel, and his back is against the Bay optical uh, area. And Fred will uh, now uh, transport himself into the tunnel and into the uh, spaceship Aquarius. You know, one thing I noted uh, back when I first came across there, that uh, starting uh, upright in the command module, and uh, heading down in Aquarius, uh, uh, there's a little bit of an orientation change that uh, you know, I've been through once uh, in the water tank. Uh, it's still pretty unusual. I find myself uh, now uh, standing with my head on the floor when I get down inside the limb. Mm -hmm. That's a great picture, Jim. Uh you got the light just right. One of the nice things, uh, Jack, uh, particularly for a novice like myself, is the uh, the ease of uh, moving around in here. And, uh, of course, as you know from working in the uh, command module computer, it's really quite a boon to uh, have zero gravity as an aid. Finding really at one G to move around very much in there, and it's uh, quite easy to move around. Uh, the lamp, as you can see, it uh, looked pretty clean. I found a couple of loose washers, about it, and the uh, a little plastic cap off the uh, sequence camera had come loose, and I found it uh, lodged over by the uh, ED panel. Okay, uh, right under uh, Jim now, he's uh, actually standing on a uh, what looks to be a can here, and uh, for the sake of all the people back there, uh, housed inside this can is the, uh, the Lamb Masson engine, or uh, hopefully you can see my hand I'm resting on top of right now, the engine that uh, we use to get off of the moon. Immediately uh, adjacent to uh, the uh, engine cover here, I have my hand on a, a white box now, which uh, has been shown before. Uh, this uh, happens to be uh, Jim's uh, list, uh, the backpack, which will uh, supply oxygen and uh, water for cooling while on the lunar surface. Uh, this uh, device uh, we hope to uh, make use of for uh, land four hours and possibly up to as much as uh, five hours. Right uh, right behind the cliff, uh, a couple of square packages I now have my hand on here, one here and one right below, are our OPSs, which are in essence the emergency uh, oxygen supplies, which are good for some uh, 40 to 45 minutes. These are we uh, get ready to uh, mount up and head outside. Uh, we placed up on top of the cliff. Okay. Uh, the second backpack is uh, mounted down on the uh, limb floor uh, and will position uh, right between uh, the two of us. 
have my hand on it uh, at this time. Roger, Fred, we see it. Uh, the picture's coming through real good, and uh, your description is good. We see uh, Tim's got the camera oriented uh, the way we like to look at it. So we'll keep talking. Okay, I guess uh, everybody is uh, pretty much envisioned the uh, space program as being uh, all uh, a lot of exotic electronics, and uh, certainly a lot of it is. But I uh, thought I'd bring out a couple items here uh, in conjunction with the bliss. Uh After the first EVA, uh, to get a very accurate measurement of the amount of water that's left in the blisses, we're going to make use of uh, this bag I'm showing now to uh, collect the remaining water out of the place and see uh, just how much we really did have left. And uh, hopefully on uh, future missions to be uh, able to extend uh, safely uh, the allowable time on these units uh, even a little further. And on uh, my other hand, I have the uh, mechanism by which we uh, determine just how much uh, water we really have in this bag. And I guess this, uh, an apt description for this device would be uh, a fish scale. And uh, you can see I'm weighing myself right now, and it uh, says I weigh uh, actually less than zero right now. I guess it's calibration isn't too good. That'll be the day. I think even you would weigh zero here, Jack. Uh, Houston, uh, this is Jim, uh, since Fred's been in the, uh, lunar module, since he's a lunar module pilot, this is the first time that he's felt that he's right side up. Roger, Jim. I might, uh, tell you that we're looking at right now that round, uh, bag that's just behind Fred to hold our, uh, vacuum hose, that when we get back inside the lab, we'll hook the vacuum off our suits, and it's resting, or it's attached to the hatch, which will, uh, we will open to, uh, go onto the lunar surface, and of course to come back in. Uh, the hatch which we, uh, have come through now is a round hatch, which is our docking hatch between the, uh, between Odyssey and the Aquarius. Roger, and uh, we see Fred looking in the vacuum cleaner there now. Okay, what I have out now, uh, Jack, is uh, uh, Leva, which has also uh, been shown before. It's a head garment uh, for wearing out on the surface. And I, I'm bringing gems out here to show a couple of mods. Uh, one problem before is that uh, the cast of characters out on the surface uh, haven't been able to uh, be distinguished apart uh, very well. So uh, not only Jim's suit has some red stripes on it, uh, but as you can see, uh, his Leva also has a, uh, a red stripe. And uh, now you can see one other mod, too, here, Jack, which I hadn't really uh, seen myself before. Uh, I 
guess on uh, 12, uh, Pete Nell had uh, commented about the uh, commented about having trouble with sunlight in the eyes. So on our levers, uh, they have uh, put on a new center section, uh, which you can pull down and use uh, sort of like a baseball cap. Okay, Jack, who's fixed up on a lever? How's the uh, detail on this one, Jack? Say again, Fred. Uh, can you see any detail on this picture now, or am I blocking out too much of the sunlight? That's affirmative. Uh, we got a good picture of the lever there, and uh, it's coming through loud and clear. Okay. Okay, uh, Jack, while well, uh, Fred's putting away my uh, helmet, you're looking over into Fred's station now. now. How's this picture? Is it okay before, do I have to adjust it? Uh, we have a hunch that uh, the setting might be in peak, but we recommend uh, average on the AOC if you haven't got it there already. We're in average, Jack. Okay, and uh, we're getting a good picture of the LMP side with the uh, Zeta over there. Hey, Jack, uh, one question on the command box in here. Uh, do I, I have the DAP right now, a wide dead band. Do you want me to begin setting up narrow dead band and knowing the rates to start PTC again? Stand by, Jack. Uh, what I'm uh, fishing out now, Jack, is another uh, new piece of hardware that uh, uh, we're taking along this time uh, as a result of some comments made on the uh, Apollo 12 flight. What uh, Fred is opening up is a drink bag that we place inside of our uh, neck ring uh, that uh, will allow us to drink while we're on the lunar surface. Uh, they, Pete and Al, did not have that in uh, Apollo 12, and they consequently got very thirsty. Uh, but we hope to alleviate that situation by having uh, our own little uh, bag of water, which, uh, with very little effort, we can uh, have a sip or two while we're looking around and uh, doing our geology work. So, uh, if you hear any funny noises, uh, it's just uh, probably the drink bag. Fred, uh, the bag's empty. Uh, Fred's now looking through our optical device. Uh, it's an instrument in which to uh, align our platform. And uh, Fred is now looking into it uh, just to see uh, what kind of an outside picture he might be able to get. We might be able to use a TV camera to uh, look through our optical instrument to the outside of the command module. A few minutes ago, while we first came in, we did manage to uh, look to the outside of the, of the side.
inside hatch of the command module to our uh, optical instrument. Stand by, we'll try and see what we can do here. Roger, Jim, break uh, deck. We'd like you to stay in the uh, dead band you're now in, and uh, we'll make a change when the uh, TV is over. Another thing we'd like you to do is check your uh, pitch and yaw on your high gain meter so we can compare it with what we're seeing down here. Okay, it's showing about uh, say 28 degrees and 267. 20 and 267. Okay, uh, Jack, have you got that uh, picture now? Uh, Fred, about one quarter of our screen is uh, lighted, and uh, it's impossible to uh, determine what you're looking at right now. Maybe you could give us a little verbal description. Okay, it's uh, looking through the uh, AOT in uh, position uh, four, uh, right rear, and uh, we're looking back uh, toward the... Uh, over the uh, side hatch at the uh, amp side of the uh, service module. Okay, is, uh, is, it, is it too dark a picture, Jack? Uh, you think the f-stop open may help? No, Fred, it's got to be centered up a little bit. That's uh, primarily what you have to do. Jack, uh, we can't turn it up anymore because uh, the uh, side hatch is only in one part of the AOT. The rest of that blank that you've seen is really uh, uh, space. Okay, we'll try another one then. A little better centered. In fact, the only other one we have that uh, shows uh, the whole picture. Uh, we're in the forward detent of the AOT now, position two, and uh, you should be seeing uh, something uh, familiar, like a radar antenna. Okay, we see you moving the uh, camera up to the AOT lens, and we got a real good picture now. Jack, I'm looking out the uh, right window now, and uh, not too far off in the distance now, you can see the, uh, the objective. And I'll zoom in on it here a little and see if it brings it in better. It's actually uh, beginning to look a little bigger now. Uh, I can see quite distinctly uh, some of the features uh, with the naked eye. And uh, so far, I guess I have to even agree with uh, Jim that it's uh, still looking pretty uh, gray uh, with a white spot.
Okay, Fred, we're getting a good uh, picture of your destination there. And Jack, you can look at the uh, at Fred's workshop now, and you can see the uh, the board guide to the computer. And over there, in the tucked away in his uh, armrest, uh, is our activation checklist, which we'll be using very shortly. Up at the top of the window, we have uh, our uh, camera already mounted, uh, ready for uh, the photograph of the. Now, Fred's uh, engaged in his favorite pastime, I found out on this flight so far. He's not in the food locker, is he? That's his second favorite pastime. He's, he's rigging his hammock for sleep on the lunar surface now to try it out to see what it's going to be like. Roger, uh, sleeping and then eating. It's kind of difficult here, uh, Jack, uh, getting into a hammock in zero G. I'm not uh, sure if I can keep floating away from it or uh, it keeps moving away from me. If you notice a few things floating around, uh, we have found uh, just about one or two washers occasionally. And for the benefit of those that may wonder uh, where uh, Jim sleeps, uh, it'd be a little difficult to rig his hammock in here uh, right now uh, with the hatch open, but his uh, runs laterally in this direction, uh, 4 amp. So uh, he has the uh, upper berth, and uh, I, uh, I get the lower berth. And uh, now while uh, Fred's uh, taking his hammock down and restoring it, I might give you some idea of the sort of confusion of attitudes since there is no up or down. And I'm uh, situated on top of the Aston engine uh, just at the uh, entrance to the tunnel. I'll reverse the camera 180 degrees and go from Fred, look through the tunnel again back at Odyssey, and we might pick up part of Jack. There he is, we see him. Okay, uh, Houston, uh, for the benefit of the television viewers, uh, we've just about completed our little uh, inspection of Aquarius, and uh, now we're proceeding through the hatch again and through the tunnel and going back to the Odyssey. Okay, Jim, it's been a great show so far.
And finally, uh, Jack's let me back into the Odyssey as we slide on through the tunnel here. Yeah, we sure are. We got a uh, good picture of the skipper there. Okay, well, we'll show you now. Uh, a little added benefit. Uh, we've got the drogue on uh, Fred's uh, couch in the command module right now. So we stood it temporarily uh, while we're checking out the uh, on Aquarius. And underneath his uh, couch, we've got the uh, probe stowed. Quite a big, cumbersome device. And maybe we'll get a, sh a shot of it for you. Looking now at our uh, probe that we uh, place uh, on the nose of uh, Odyssey. Uh, it's a very heavy thing, but uh, of course, in uh, zero gravity, it uh, weighs nothing and it's much easier to move around. As a matter of fact, both uh, Fred and Jack commented, as many people in the past have, of how much uh, bigger the spacecraft appears uh, in actual flight uh, when you have such ease of movement compared to our simulators, which we train rather difficult. Okay, we're seeing a good picture of the probe there, uh, Jim, and uh, looks like the characters uh, shaved before the show this time. Well, Fred said he had to keep up his TV image. Yeah, that may be uh, my first and last time, though, no, Jack. It took Fred one hour to shave. We might uh, give you a quick uh, a quick shot of our entertainment on board the spacecraft, which is uh, keeping us company for some time. Okay, Jim, uh, we're seeing the tape recorder now, and uh, just by the way, how long do you expect to keep the TV on this evening? Well, whenever you stand by one. Yeah, I 
got to put the uh, Kevin reprint valve in there, Jack. Every time he does that, our hearts, our hearts come in our mouth. And, uh, Jack, anytime you want to terminate TV, we're, uh, we're all set to go. Okay, Jim, uh, been a real good TV show. Uh, we think we ought to conclude it from here now. Uh, what do you think? Roger, sounds good. And this is the crew of Apollo 13. Wish everybody there a nice evening. And uh, we're just about ready to close out our inspection of Aquarius and get back for a pleasant evening at Odyssey. Good night.